in this video we are going to be discussing the last reactions involving amines. Specifically, right now we are going to be talking about the reactions of aryl diazonium ions. Understand that alkyl diazonium salts are extremely unstable and they can decompose um, to form a variety of products, okay, if they do not explode first. I actually never worked with these compounds previously during my um, graduate career, so I really don't know how explosive they are. But understand that aryl diazonium salts are a bit more unstable and synthetically versatile, okay, and we learned how to produce them in the last um, video and now we're going to learn their uses. The first reaction that we can uh, learn about is about uh, Sandmeyer reactions. And in these reactions understand that we have an aryl diazonium ion with copper salt that is going to install specifically a halogen or a cyan group to the ring. As you can see here, once we have that diazonium ion into the ring system, if we react it with copper 1 bromide, we install a bromine. If we um, react it with copper 1 chloride, we install a chlorine. If we react it with copper 1 iodide, we introduce an iodide. If we uh, react it with um, copper 1 cyanide, then we put a cyano group onto the ring system. Understand that overall, the Sandmeyer reaction is part of a multi-step sequence to install a carboxylate or carboxylic acid um, motif onto a benzene ring. So as you can see here, um, specifically, this is just a sequence of reactions that are going to explain how we can incorporate that carboxylic acid specifically onto a ring system. Let's uh, say that we start this reaction in which we have an isopropyl benzene, which in the first step of the reaction, as you can see with those reagents HNO3, H2SO4, we are going to nitrate. Okay the ring system then utilizing iron fa uh, with uh, just aqueous acid followed by NaOH we are going to convert it specifically into an aniline step four which is the reaction with um, sodium nitrite and HCl is what makes our diazonium ion then that diazonium ion if you react it with copper 1 cyanide, which is the second set where we have 1 and 2, um, followed by acidic workup, is going to take our cyano group into a carboxylic acid. Understand that that step is one of the reactions that we did previously um, when we were discussing um, the reactions that have to do with the carboxylic acid derivatives. Also, aryl diazonium ions can serve as precursors for installing a fluorine or a hydroxy group on a benzene ring. So as you can see in the following reactions, if you react a benzene ring that has that di um, diazonium ion, if you react it with HBF, uh, HBF4, you can incorporate a fluorine. If you react it with water and heat, then you can change from the diazonium ion into a phenol. Continuing on to the versatility of this diazonium ion, they can also be replaced with a hydrogen atom. Um, and as you can see, when it comes to this, we are just going to be reacting our diazonium ion with H3PO2. And that's how we incorporate that proton. Now, 
Understand that this is a very useful reaction when an amino group is needed on the ring temporarily. And this is, you know, in a way that we can just take advantage is activating and directing effects. Now, these reactions that you see in the bottom, this is just a synthetic strategy. Let's say that overall you want a polybromination. So understand that having that formation of the aniline will give you a benzene ring that is activated because the NH2 group is going to add um, is going to be an electron donating group once all the bromination happens as you can see the steps of making the diazo group followed by the h3po2 what is going to do is that it's going to take out the amino group and replace it with a hydrogen so overall we took advantage of having the nh2 group to incorporate the halogens and then we remove it because the target was the incorporation of the halogens onto the ring system Now, diazonium salts also serve as an electrophile and they can, um, can be attacked by activated ring systems, okay? This is a way in which we um, review uh, electrophilic aromatic substitution. Understand that this is specifically is called azo coupling. So, when it comes to this, you can see in the following reaction that we have a ring system in which specifically we start with phenol. Then we are reacting it with our diazonium molecule. If we follow the arrows, I just described the first step. Then after we have the incorporation of this diazo group through the nitrogen onto our phenol group as you can see in the middle we have the sigma complex okay that's what is outlined in the bottom in the brackets which this is just the electrons that are going to be moving around as part of the resonance structures because of the reaction of the phenol and as you can see, in order to regain the aromaticity, the chloride ion is going to then deprotonate the ring system that comes from the phenol. And then we can see the azo coupling onto the phenol molecule. So why are azo couplings um, important? Well, they are utilized to produce azo dyes. Now, these compounds, because they are highly conjugated, they are, um, have a brilliant color. And this is utilized um, to tag molecules, specifically um, when you're doing certain chemistries. Um, they can also be utilized in biology. Now, bearing the substitution of the ring system affects specifically the dye color of the molecule. In the last section of this chapter, we're going to talk about nitrogen heterocycles, okay? And when it comes to heterocycles, these are going to be cyclic compounds that contain atoms, okay, that are other than carbon. That's why they're called heterocycles. And in the case of the ones that contain nitrogen, those are nitrogen heterocycles, okay? Now... As you can see, these compounds have been used in order to make very important molecules that are used out there as drugs. So for example, in the left side here, we have Nexium, which is a proton pump inhibitor used in the treatment of ulcers and acid reflux. And as we can see on the right side of the slide, this is the um, molecule of Viagra, which is utilized in the treatment of erectile dysfunction and pulmonary arterial hypertension. When it comes to nitrogen heterocycles, understand that a parole is a simple aromatic heterocycle and it undergoes electrophilic aromatic substitution actually faster than benzene. So if we have parole, 
and understand that we reacted with molecular bromine, we are going to have bromination of our parole in the carbon atom that is next to the nitrogen. Now, substitution of carbon number two, which is technically atom number two, um, specifically give us a more stable intermediate. So what we can see here is the mechanism of how that substitution is going to happen. Remember that there's a hydrogen atom present here. And then the bromine is going to substitute it in. In order to draw the arrows for that reaction, understand that first the double bond system is going to attack the bromine, um, break the bromine-bromine bond. Then after that, we're going to have a resonance stabilized intermediate. And in the last step of the reaction, you can envision base removing the proton and then we are going to regenerate the double bond. In this case, understand that a parole, actually, that lone pair is not basic because it's going to be part of the aromatic system. That's why it's important um, that we point that out. Now, another nitrogen heterocycle, it is known as imidazole, and it is also found naturally occurring compound. As you can see, that imidazole ring, it is actually part of a histamine, okay? And whenever you're having like um, allergy responses, that's why you take an antihistamine. So understand that histamines are naturally occurring um, <clears throat> compounds. Another nitrogen heterocycle is called a pyridine. Pyridine is a six-member heterocycle. And you can see it because of the hexagon that it forms. Now, the lone pair in nitrogen is actually not delocalized because pyridine can actually act as a weak base. Because in this system, if we think about it, that lone pair that is on atom one is not part of the aromatic system. So it can actually be protonated. So if we look at the conjugate acid pKa between parole, pyridine, and cyclohexylamine, you can see that pyridine is actually acting as a weak base compared to parole. Now, um, in a way, as I mentioned, when that parole, that the reason why it doesn't want to be acting as a base, or, or you can see that it's still pretty acidic, is because that lone pair on the nitrogen is part of the aromatic system. So this is highly unlikely. Um, that is going to be getting protonated while in the pyridine it will uh, still get protonated because it's acting as a weak base and you are not disrupting the aromaticity of the ring system when we compare it to cyclohexylamine remember that this is a uh, in a way an example of a primary amine so we are not affecting one of those um, stability uh, forces in there because the cyclohexylamine does not have aromaticity in the ring system. Now, pyridine, oh, pyrimidine is very similar to pyridine. And understand that uh, pyrimidine is a common moiety of biological molecules. In biological molecules, we see how um, DNA's base pairs, which are just part of the nucleic acid system, have those motifs and they're actually involved in the hydrogen bonding events that are going to be occurring at the level of the primary structure for DNA in order to give it its structure. So understand that pyridine and, pyrim and pyrimidines can undergo electrophilic aromatic substitutions. However, they usually don't work very efficiently.